Hello and welcome to part 2 of my SSD upgrade. In this part I will be installing the heatsink onto the SSD and then installing the SSD into my system. But I will then go ahead and go into the BIOS of my motherboard just to make sure the SSD is recognised and to get everything ready for recording part 3 in which I will install the operating system. But this video isn't part 3, this video is part 2. But now I've explained what I'm going to do, let's just jump straight into the main focus of this video. Well, you can see in front of you here the cable, the heatsink and the SSD. These are the new pieces of hardware I've got to replace my old SSD that failed in my system. If you want to see the unboxing video then go over to part one in which I explain my reasons for upgrading and also unbox these products that you're seeing in front of you. So if you want to watch that video I'll put a link to it down in the description. So first things first, gloves because I'm going to be handling thermal pads and I don't want to get any oils from my skin onto the thermal pads or onto the heatsink. I will say this is my first ever time installing a heatsink to an M.2 SSD so I'm not 100% sure on what I need to do but EK Waterblocks, the uh, company that manufactures the heatsink provided this little guide so I'll be following this type of sandwich assembly with the heatsink and thermal pads and stuff on here. Okay, gloves on, let's begin. So there's the SSD, here are the thermal pads. The thermal pads, one of them is half a millimetre thick and the other one is one millimetre thick. I've just noticed the thermal pads are the same colour as these gloves. Well, near enough the same colour anyway. What we have here are the little clips that hold the entire heatsink assembly together. And now I'm going to get the heatsinks out from here. So there's a back plate and there's the top heatsink. So the smaller one goes on the bottom. Sorry, the thinner one goes on the bottom, so you just put that on there and then the that will go on top and that will go on there and then this will go on there like that. Let's measure everything and begin the actual installation. I just realised the camera wasn't recording, but basically what I've done is I've gone and got some, a pencil and some paper and I'm currently measuring out how long I need to cut these thermal pads to so that they will fit. So yeah, I now need to mark out on these thermal pads. 72 and a half millimetres in from the edge. Right, so there's the thin thermal pad. And then there's the thick thermal pad. Need to figure out how to put it together. I'm going to put the bottom one on first. The bottom one is the thinner one. Now you see, I put gloves on to try and stop oils transferring onto the thermal pad. I need some tweezers, this is too fiddly. I'll put it on here first. Oh, you know what, forget it. I can't feel anything through the gloves. That will do. Far from the uh, easiest, but that will do. I just couldn't feel anything through the gloves. I couldn't feel the edge of the PCB, I couldn't feel the uh, thermal pad. Basically, the only accurate sense I had to go with was my vision. It's only a thermal pad anyway, so no need to worry. Right, so the thick plastic bit was a bit that peeled off first, so... There's the installation of the heatsink to the M.2. So after looking at my heatsink installation on this M.2 SSD, I have noticed that where the thermal pad is not quite touching the PCB, uh, is actually where there's those little capacitors but if we look at where the actual flash memory chips are and the controller and there's another little chip up there then we can see the majority of the thermal pad is actually touching the heatsink which is good but as it is only an M.2 SSD a heatsink is not strictly necessary, it's more of an option you can choose if you want. And I did choose the, uh, the heatsink option, as you can tell. Now I need to peel this off before I install it, so... You know, where are the tweezers? I need to make this cinematic without the weird aspect ratio. There we go. As you have just seen, I have removed the little plastic thing from the EK logo. 
And now the next step that I need to do is download the Windows Media Creation Tool and create a USB bootable installation. So I shall time lapse that and insert it after this clip. Now I've created a installation media and I need to move my desktop onto the box and then I can begin the installation process. Originally I thought I would need to remove my graphics card to install the SSD but if I zoom in, well as you can see I have full access to the M.2 slot and the graphics card isn't blocking it so I won't need to take my graphics card out which is good. But what I will need to take out is my hard drive cage and all of these, well, SATA power cables and SATA cables and stuff. So I shall do that. SATA cables and fan SATA controller that I never used, cables removed. Now slide that bit out and lift it out like that. Now that's out, I can sort out what I was going to do with my fan cable and stuff at this side. I have a fan controller that's built into this case, but I never really use it. I just leave it on the like middle setting, the medium one, because it's got low speeds, medium speeds, or high speeds. I just leave it on the medium one. And the reason why I kept it plugged in is because if I undo this plug here, the closest fan connector on this motherboard for this fan, which is a rear fan, is down here somewhere. But as you can see, this cable is not long enough to uh, go around, loop in through the hole and plug in, which is why I bought this extension cable. So now all I need to do is plug that in there and then put that connector through there and then plug it in on the motherboard at the other side. Uh, I'll need to unplug this front USB audio because the fan connector is right beside it. So this is the uh, fan connector coming through here. So now I just need to twist that around and plug it in there like that. And then there's the rear fan plugged in and I need to just go ahead and reattach my front audio. Like that, so there's my front audio and my rear fan now connected. Now what I need to do is just feed those back through to the other side and I will uh, then manage them on the other side of the motherboard tray. Now I can install my M.2 drive. So I believe installing this is similar to installing RAM on a laptop. Put it in at an angle and set it down gently, like that. Now I need to get this tiny little screw in there. And I think my tweezers are too big to actually hold this, so I could be here a while. I don't even know where I put the tweezers now. My tweezers are borderline too big to hold this screw. And of course the screwdriver I have isn't magnetic. Okay, so the old magnet trick on the screwdriver. And now I just need to screw that in. Not too tight, but not too loose. And there's my M.2 drive installed. Well, that was a lot easier than what I thought it was. And yes, I would have needed to have removed my graphics card. But now I need to put the graphics card back in. I'm not going to bother cleaning it because I cleaned my system not that long ago. So, it's not that dusty. Right, there's that screw in. And now I'll put this screw in. There's the graphics card back in, now I just need to plug it in and everything should be good. Now I've got everything installed, what I'm going to do is actually go into the BIOS of my motherboard and just make sure that the M.2 is actually recognised because I know it's supported and I know my computer can boot from it but as it was my first ever time installing an M.2 I did need to set up my BIOS so it was able to boot from the M.2 as an M.2 doesn't use the traditional SATA controller so you need to reconfigure it for it to use the PCIe controller or something like that. Now I was originally intending on saving this for part 3 and the detailed part of it I will save for part 3 but I'll throw in like a little teaser at the end of this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is reset all to default. BIOS mode set that to just UEFI. Right so it's detected my Samsung M.2 SSD in the top one but as there's no OS installed then I'll need to go and select the Kingston Data Traveller. 
which is where I have created the ISO to reinstall Windows. It was detected. Thank, thank you. It's detected. 500 gigabytes in size, near enough. Uh, that is the M.2 drive because that is the only drive in the system, and I know that's not the USB drive because the USB drive is only 16 gigabytes. Oh, and I just kicked the camera. <laughs> So in this video you have seen me install the heatsink to the SSD, install the SSD into my system and then go ahead and make sure that my motherboard and my computer recognises the SSD. But that is all for part two, so if you have enjoyed this video give it a like, if you haven't give it a dislike, consider subscribing to see future uploads and as always thank you for watching.